Well, let's look at the news because we had a lot uh, to cover in this past week. And the first article comes to us from TechCrunch.com. Rising energy costs are making the cloud more expensive. And Good talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this is something that, well, at least in the article, seems to uh, affect uh, the EU a little bit more because yes. I mean there could cost. I don't know what really happened over there, but, but it's kind of been out of control in terms of like people's bills going up like 150. Yeah, it's, and, it's a total mystery why energy costs are higher well, in, Europe. in Europe. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's. that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. But they also it seems like they do. They have a lot more renewable stuff. Like, and I thought a lot of these cloud providers were like doing like solar on the roofs and things like that that would kind of insulate them. From this. Well, we, you know, we have to remember that some of these providers are not like top tier providers. It's oh. not like we're not talking about Amazon Web Services. We're not talking about Microsoft Azure. This is like OVH. Uh, if you remember OVH, we reported on a few months ago when one of their data centers burned down. Is that because, the France one? Yes. One France? Okay. Because it was effectively like, you know, just built <laughs> in a non a center for the, you know, capitals or something. Right? Ovechkin. That's what Ovechkin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty close. <laughs> now, this, this, yeah. Their facility was made by one of the three pigs, who, the one who had the worst. <laughs> Design, if I recall. <laughs> that is right. Uh, however, you know, situations like these do tend to hit the small players first, but the, the big players aren't immune to it, so they'll get hit eventually, and energy costs are higher in Europe right now. We're, we're going into winter, and so your heating costs and things go up. Yeah. The uh, Russian Federation's actions in Ukraine and, and cutting off gas supplies into Europe have affected energy costs, and so all of that results in increased costs. And, well, when you're a cloud provider, one of the nice things about the cloud, like as a customer for me, I don't have to worry about multiple connections to the power grid and multiple ISPs, generators, air climate control. I don't have to worry about all that stuff because the vendor takes care of it. Well, the vendors are getting hit in their bottom line. And so the way they solve that is by increasing costs. Now, if you work in IT management like I do and deal with budgets, that can be challenging. A lot of times we plan our budgets out based on a little bit of growth, and we don't think about, like, what if our energy costs increase? You know, do we have that in the budget to accommodate for it? And so that's why it's something that's important. We need to keep an eye on it for as, as IT providers. Obviously, if you use OVH Cloud, if you use Hetzner, if you use you know, somebody like that, then, then this is already affecting you. But if you're using AWS, well... You might want to consider the fact that your your, your budget could poten- or your, your run costs could potentially increase as much as ten percent as they correct for energy costs. Well, some of them, like Hetzner said, you know they went up about ten percent, which pretty much matches inflation for the last year. But uh, this M two four seven in Manchester went up one hundred and sixty one percent, which. I don't think anyone is budgeting for that. <laughs> like, just seems, in case, it seems like a lot, Don. <laughs> yeah, it goes up quite a bit. Who, who's using these kinds of companies, though? Because you know, I think I feel like most small businesses are are on you know the Amazon larger companies or or, or Azure. Are, are, do do those uh, larger providers like outsource to these guys, or they've got all their own stuff, right? So that that does happen sometimes. You know, you'll hear about these providers like. Um, uh, well, I, you know, some of these guys don't even have their own facilities. Like they use Equinix or other providers that have the, you know, it, a lot of us never hear of companies like Equinix, but yeah. Equinix owns some of the largest data centers in Europe and it gets rebranded as an Azure pop or a AWS pop or something. Actually, I think Amazon owns all of theirs, but I know Microsoft uses a couple of different pops. And so it's, it's possible that other people are leveraging them. It's also possible that they were underpriced to try and draw business, and now they're having to correct and get back to a normal price. I haven't looked at their pricing sheets or whatever. I you know, hadn't really heard of M247, uh, or M247, I guess is probably what that probably. is, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I assume Google Cloud is just like on a Raspi in somebody's office. Yeah, yeah, which is more than adequate to cover their workload. <laughs> we need a we need a new SD card. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Raspi too. Oh, wow. yeah. nice. so they're sailing. That's impressive. <laughs> if you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there. <laughs>